Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning, all. How are y'all? <clears throat> Happy Thursday. Good morning, pen friends. Sarah cleaned her pens. In her in her honor, I'll read. Uh, I I'll, I'll read. I'll, I'll wear I'll wear Sarah's library uh, hoodie uh, fundraiser. <clears throat> so, whoa. Where am I? There I am. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? I think I'm good. Been busy. Been busy already this morning. I did one of those um, every once and every, I don't know, probably once or twice a month. I'll crash at like 8 30, 9 o'clock at night. So, like, I'm, I got a lot of sleep, so I'm kind of wired up this morning. <clears throat> So, uh, <laughs> okay, Nib, my, Nib Taylor is also uh, my optometrist. <laughs> it needs some computer glasses, yeah. So, so I did that thing where I was just like, I was, yesterday I was just done, like, it was like 8.30, couldn't read, couldn't watch TV, couldn't scroll on my phone, couldn't write. It was like, seems like a good time to go to bed, and I hit the bed and I just crashed. And then, um... Got up about six o'clock. Good to go. So yeah, got the Monami kit giveaway. Thank you so much. The pins are really nice. Yeah, those look cool. I like them that they're like micro ball points. Good morning, Queen Obashi. <clears throat> Love the podcast. Perfect answers. Also, my best friend went from Lamy to Montblanc. Yeah, <laughs> that is an outlier. That is an outlier. <clears throat> so yeah, it's like like one of the points I wanted to get across is is that we don't not discuss those things on purpose but at what point is it just not fun right like if I'm not gonna waste my time on something something yucky so yeah it's a balance it's a balance rich takes 29 months of sub and sub and we're actually gonna talk about the uh the optima that went to the shoptima today um, we have two more, two more boxes of pins to go through. We probably won't do like a, we're not going to have like a two hour stream today, probably more like an hour long stream today because I have a, uh, well, uh, much more shipping than I anticipated, which is great. Like spoke, spoke orders are cranking. So yeah, it's good. Is that a self portrait? It's pretty darn close, isn't it? My cheeks are too chunky to do a real skull face. I tried though. <laughs> I should try that going to bed when tired thing. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Hey, good morning, Tessa. Love your face. Ha. Said it first. Ha. <clears throat> um, what's today? Thursday? Philly Pin Show starts tomorrow? Nib Taylor, when are you going? When are you going to the Philly Pin Show? Tomorrow? Or is it like a Saturday, Sunday thing? I lose track. I haven't been up to speed. Haven't been up to speed. Good morning, Schmevelin. How are you? <clears throat> so yeah, I hopefully y'all enjoyed the conversation on yesterday's podcast, and then it ended up being timely. And and Kate has a, a good timeliness in here. I, I saw your Slack messages. You're always free to write for me. You know that. You know where I stand. Um, and it ended up being like the uh. Pin TMZ ended up being like a whole thing yesterday, like outside of like the podcast stuff with all that noodler stuff that y'all shared with me. So it was like, good grief. Yeah, so the Philly Pin Show has strict uh, mask and vaccine requirements, so which is great. Congrats, congrats on your silver and pickleball. <clears throat> Hopefully be more, more, uh, that was our, our first tournament of the year in January. So we get to play pretty much year round here. So it was great. We didn't know we didn't know about it, 04A, until I came on the stream after it. I didn't know it. I had no no idea. Until y'all told me when I got on stream yesterday, then I went and read up all about it. It's like, what a nightmare. I would have mentioned something, but <clears throat> Look forward to the day when I'm comfortable to attend a show. I miss them. Yeah, me too, She-Wolf. Like, I'm with you. Like, it's been... Be Baltimore two years ago. So, in another... No, I guess Philly two years ago. So, exactly two years now. So, yeah. Yeah. 
used to like noodlers, but his views turned me off. Yeah, this has been a long running thing, and like it just you know falls to the wayside and then crops up sometimes again. Your butt is dragging this morning. We'll get it out of bed. Don't you have pre preschool to get ready for? <laughs> I'm inking up more pens, probably get over 30 inked. Yeah, I'm not going to accept your next phone call if that's the case. Yeah, two years ago at BWI, but I was at Philly before that, right? So, so I guess the last one, the last one I attended was BWI. That's right. Yeah, for those for those of y'all who hadn't already sworn off noodlers, this is nothing new. I mean, it doesn't make it right or any better, but I had sworn it off years ago. Years and years and years ago. Yeah, let's talk about Tony. God, I hate that guy. I mean, I think a lot of people dislike the the product. But there's but there were like some good products there for a while that always sold. <clears throat> Tony did a Tony thing. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about pens. <clears throat> Where can I catch up on the current Noodlers controversy? Uh luxury brands of America's Instagram, probably. For every letter Brad writes, Queen of Washi will clean a pen. Wow. That's a challenge. We could probably do some kind of some kind of letter writing challenge. <laughs> and I would definitely not bet on me. Would definitely not bet on me on that. Oh, that you you just miss Nathan being <clears throat> the bigot that he is, I guess. Let's see the pen collection V2. I think we're on V3 now, Slumberland Studio. Unfortunately, like it, there could be at least a V4 and a V5, which is which is lame. It'd be a better challenge if Mike cleaned his pens for every letter Brad wrote. Well, at that point, we would get no letter writing and no pens cleaned, and both of us would be happy. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> both of us would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have to write a letter and Mike would never have to be uh, clean a pen and we would uh, sail off into the sunset. <laughs> um, real quick update on my, uh, on my uh, Rockster. This Bach nib is flowy. <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> there is some ink flow happening on this thing with that Tasha ink. So I'd use that Tasha ink. It's really great, but it is very, um, very, uh, very inky. So this is high ink flow. So it must be like a fine nib. I will get this nib modified at some point whenever I get the chance, just because it is really, really wide, but it's a, the nib writes really well. It just writes like a medium, um, medium nib. All right. Smand, we need to move. Always, the poor Smand has to keep. Uh, pigs will fly before Brad writes a letter. Probably true. Poor Smand always gets kicked to the curb when I, when I have to do this. I find coated nibs to have more flow. Yeah, hundred percent. And that flow, ink flow is, ink flow is usually not my like high on my priority list of things, right? They have wider lines and in, in general. <clears throat> All right, so we got two more boxes today. Seems to be more with the black coating than the black ion. Agree again, O4A. We definitely have the uh, same experience. Good morning, Cedrus. All right. We have an interesting mix here, mix of pens here. A little bit of randomness, a little bit of classicness, a little bit of expensiveness little bit of inexpensiveness so a little bit of brokenness um i see my favorite pin in the middle of that box that one that one that one this is the infamous optima so we'll, we'll get to that one we will get to that 
All right. So this is my yard OLED, which I should probably use more frequently. This is a sterling silver barrel, um, barley corn, yard OLED Viceroy, Viceroy barley corn. I think it's the, the full, the full name of it. And yes, the entire thing is silver. This is the one I got for a song at the Raleigh Pin Show's auction two, three years ago. It is very heavy. It For someone who doesn't like big, heavy pins, it works. Like, it works pretty well. The nib is glorious. I mean, it's just a really good... What is this nib? 18 karat. It's an 18 karat fine nib, but it is firm and stiff. I don't know, uh, Namiki Winter Vlad, if you have like firmness in your nib, but I find this for a big gold nib, it's pretty firm, right? Yeah, this is the pen. This is the ego pen you put on the, the desk. That's the, the paper holder for your stack of papers that you have to sign, right? Yeah, Bay State Blue. Oof, that stuff's dangerous to begin with. So, for a big, heavy pen, I kind of like it, and I should probably ink it up more. Um, you do have to keep it polished. A um, little bit of fa fancy bits on the converter. I love fancy bits on the converter. They just look so out of place. <laughs> it was like, I, I, I appreciate your fancy bits on the converter there, Yard Lead, but, you know, I, I know this is like the, the Jeep Schmidt converter <laughs> with, the little, with the little guy stuck on the end here. I was like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, it's the toupee of converters. <laughs> you haven't missed the prayer cap closing. I don't even have a prayer on the desk right now. I would like to snap a prayer close though. So yeah, anyway, somehow this pen works for me um, when by all accounts it shouldn't based on what I like for pens. So that's a good snap. Very stout, sturdy pen. So for example, this is a broken, see, told you I haven't fixed this yet. That's an M800, just for a size comparison. And you see how big it is. And this one's silver, and this one's plastic. So you can imagine the weight of this one. Not a prayer, not a prayer. Um, next up, also in the Guilloche, Guilloche family here, uh, we have the Pen Addict. Um, Aurora, Optima. Yeah, Optima Prera. So this was an Optima I picked up for a song. I mean, like, I can't totally remember, but I want to say like 250. Like, well under like half of what it should go for. Like, really, really cheap. And since it was so inexpensive and had this... uh uh, little gap here for etching and I'd bought it at the Arkansas pin show. I took it to the Venice pin shop and, <laughs> and I had them etch the pin addict into the cap. <laughs> it's funny. I like it. It's a fancy pin and it has the pin addict etched on the cap. I also got the nib modified. So it's a broad, it was a broad nib. Maybe I don't have this one modified yet. Oh, it's a medium nib. Look at the tipping on this. This is a medium nib. <laughs> Panatic ball caps. Ah, yeah. If we do, we'd get the Ebbets ones, right? Come on, nib. Do your thing, camera. Anyway, this is a medium, but it's got like mega tipping on it. So it writes like a broad. I I'll probably get this. Uh, the cap would work on the other Optimus. True. All right, sorry, the camera's not cooperating this morning. Um, the ink I like in here I, is the um, 
the Van S. Robert Oster hemp. So I like the green ink in with this gold and black pen, which is normally not my not my style. Um, no, it's just a lot of waiting and searching, Rattler Gen. Um, and being ready to, you know, it's, it's an educational process, right? Like after spending years and years looking at things and knowing the value of things and deciding if that thing works for you when the opportunity arises, being able to make the decision to purchase it. So I think I paid two, I was either like 225 or 275 for this yard of lead. And then it was definitely under 300 for this because I probably wouldn't have bought it for much more because it's not like totally my style, right? That's one of the things you like shouldn't do if the pen's not totally your style, but I had some, I had some ideas about that pen. Whereas this pen, I paid like pretty much full price for it um, all those years ago. <clears throat> so this was the Aurora, this was the Shoptima. This is the Aurora Optima that went to the Shoptima. So what happens here, so like this is really all one piece. The barrel is all one piece. And it right between these connections here, right above this threading, like it just split right in half, right? And um, so I had to send it off to Aurora to get it replaced. So it's still one of the like the really, really great nibs. It's an extra fine. Again, Aurora makes a, like a thick nib for like a gold nib. So it's firm. And then it has the ebonite feet on there. So I really, really, um, I really, really like their nibs. It broke at the ink window. That's typical, unfortunately. Yeah. So after I found out, after I said what happened, they're like, oh, yeah. That happens. <clears throat> the yard of lead may be the most impressive snag you have made. Yeah, I remember at the time, people were like, kind of like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> I remember when I when I bought it at the auction, it like just ended, and I was like, that was another. Um, someone emailed me yesterday. It's like you should write all these stories down. That was a Jim. That's a Jim Rouse story. Uh, may he rest in peace. We, he was sitting behind me at the auction for this, right? And I thought it was cool. I saw it. I was like, this is a, I've always wanted a yard of lead pen, but like, I'm not going to be able to afford it, whatever. And like, I bid, say, like, so let's say I bid like uh, 225 or whatever. And then someone else bid 250. And then, I didn't say anything. And he's sitting behind me and he shoves me like in the shoulder. He's like, you know, like you need a bit 275 and then it just ended and he just looked at me and I looked at him and we were like, okay, <laughs> but yeah, so he's one of the reasons why I got this pen. He made me bid more on it. He shoved me right in the back of the shoulder. So I will never forget that. So that's uh, that was a cool one. Good looking out, Jim. That's right. Into grooming. Four months of subbing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Snag one for six fifty, and then most pleased two seventy five was crazy. Yeah, it really, really was. I'm pretty sure that was the price. We'll have to go. I wrote about it when I got it and wrote down the price, but I can't remember now. But that sounds familiar to me. It was definitely under three hundred. It definitely started with a two. Yeah, it's like two seventy five or two eighty five. Um, next up, really different, <laughs> different price point in this pen, but still one of the, one of my favorite pens. This is the Gravi, Gravitas, uh, you call this the Gravitas Entry or the Gravitas Beginner? It's the Entry, right? Um, it's just a cool pen. I think I put it here because I didn't want to, uh, um, I didn't want to misplace it because I like using it. So... It's just a really well done pen. I actually have two of these to give away coming soon. I do not have a spreadsheet. <laughs> I do not have a spreadsheet. Um, so a very kind reader has sent me several pens over the years. Um, I'm going to be giving a couple of these away here pretty soon. Really, really great pens. And Ben theoretically has a package coming to me, but you never know uh, with that shipping situation. So just a great... Um, if you're not familiar with Gravitas, this is like a $60 pen, and it's worth every penny. 
and it these two are kind of here for a reason, right? Like I'll, I'll use them for stuff, right? So this is my, a lot of my uh, ink testing will go here sometimes. Midwestern, thank you for the follow, appreciate you. Hope you're having a well this morning. Good, oh, yes, mm, words. My Christmas gravitas pen is in shipping hell. Yeah, I don't. It's it's a challenge right now. So I use this for ink testing because it has the uh, the stub nib in it, the one point five millimeter stub nib in it. So it is well indeed. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so this is the uh, Prussian blue five eighty ALR. So I just keep it so it doesn't get like stashed away somewhere when I'm wanting to test a particular ink that is going to need a stub nib. Like I have that Tasha ink in the Rockster, right? Like I'm going to be able to get enough ink and show it on the page well enough that I don't have to put it in here. But there's some inks that just do really well um, with the stub nib. Like if I got a shimmer ink or a shading ink, I like to put them in the stub nib. Hey, what's up, Evan? So I like to put them in the stub nib. So this is kind of my ink review pen. My previous ink review pen was a Twisby Mini with the stub nib. I'm not a fan of that grip on the Twisby. Uh, I get that. It it feels slick, like when you grab it, but it holds on pretty well. Or it could it could be like a little bit of annoying on the like the back of your fingers, right? Because it's got ridges. If y'all aren't familiar with this nib, let's see if we can get it here. We haven't been had had good camera look. It's still hard to see, even though it's in focus. Those are like micro ridges on there. Whereas this is also has micro ridges on here, but these are wider. Uh, maybe not real wider now that I have it out. Probably the same. But almost impossible for y'all to see in camera. Because the, the light's playing with it, but you can see how the ridges are like kind of flashing. Yeah. So I don't mind it. My uh, my uh, fingers stick to it pretty well, and it doesn't annoy me. Um, is is that what it's called when it flashes like that? Dithering, like the podcast. All right. <clears throat> this is the pen that's gonna put my kids through school, through college. I don't know what to do with this. I like it a lot. I use it frequently. But I don't think I've ever had a pen uh, that's actually appreciated in value, right? So this is the Conan Monarch. Um, so the last ones on eBay were going for like a thousand something dollars. And what? How much did I pay for them when they came out? What was the what was the regular price? Four fifty, something like that. That's today's giveaway. No, <laughs> I have to figure out. Yeah, like four ish when I bought it. Yeah, but like I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably sell it. I don't. Know, I like it too. So I've never. Um, Conan's kind of have a cult following, just from the engineering aspect of the pens. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I should probably sell it. Fun fact, you could get the mini without the clip at just over four. So, anyway, I probably don't use it enough to justify keeping it, right? So, I should probably probably sell it. Yeah, it's got a, uh, it's got a very engineered um, filling system in here. So, that's a lot of the cost is, is in the filling system. I hate to tell you, but college costs a lot more than a pen. I know. Facts. So, it's a nice pen. I, it's the only Conan I have. I like it. I've never gotten the Conan hype. Like, I don't need 10 of them, right? I'm good with the one, right? I, I enjoy it for what it is. I don't need five more of them, like some other pens that I do. Like, when we get into this next box over here, you'll see. Soda Pen was able to get two spoke icons and three mechanical pencils. The pen I sold was appreciating. I was not wanting to use it based on that. It left. Yeah, I think it kind of makes sense. Like, you never buy pens as an investment, right? Like, these things do not appreciate in value. Every now and then, something weird happens, like Conan stops making pens, and there's the supply goes down to zero, and people want them. So, who knows? All right, here's my broken 800. 
I haven't spent the time to to get in here and fix it yet. It should be easy. It's just the uh, I was cleaning it out and I unpistoned it, so I just haven't dealt with like really getting it back together yet. But that's my fault. It should be easy. I can probably do it right here, honestly. So I got to get this screw down here, notch. But this, yeah, this is the label one. This is the only big Pelican that I have. I have a couple smaller ones here. Yeah, I should be able to fix that real quick. Just extend the piston before screwing it on. Yeah, I'll play with it after. So I just, uh, I haven't fidgeted with it enough. And then I just got to get that then there. So... Screw the piston into the knob before screwing the housing all the way in. I don't know. I'm going to break it on camera. Fix it on stream, silly, right? That's the content you pay for. So I'll deal with that later. Should be an easy fix. But yeah, this is the cool one um, with the different uh, part names on here. It's like this is a good one because I, I use it. So, like, it's kind of getting worn and stuff, which I like the look of that, right? This is a cool pen. I, I use uh, um, Fire on Fire in here a lot just because I like having, like, that orange ink in here. And this has a pretty big nib, I know, I think. Medium. Yeah. Medium that I got ground into a stub. So, this is a great pen. Don't have the piston against the knob. It needs to be extended against the back end of the nib. If it's against the piston knob, you won't be able to put it on but not use it after. I don't, I'm going to put it back and forget about it. Well, I can't get the piston to move down. And I feel like I'm going to break it. So, yeah, I don't feel like breaking this on here. It's a big nib no matter what size the stamp says. Oh, yeah, that's like a double broad. So, we'll leave that there. On the complete opposite end of the Pelican Spectrum, this is my first gold nib. I need to remove the whole mechanism. Okay, I will do that. Just unscrew it from here. See, y'all got me to keep fidgeting with it. Yeah, I need something to grip onto there, so we will mess with that later. So, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, this is a 405, M405, with an extra, extra fine Mike Masayama needlepoint. Gotcha, Mafia Geek. So this is my very first Pelican. This pen has a story too. This pen actually has multiple stories. So <laughs> this was, I bought at the Atlanta Pen Show probably like, can y'all see that tip? God, that thing is sharp. You can stab yourself with this. So this was probably like, I don't know, 2014. All right. And uh, Richard Bender was there, right? And I was like, him and hawing about spending, it was like $275 at the time. Um, and I hemmed and hawed and hemmed and hawed and I bought this it was the color that I wanted and it had an extra fine nib so I just bought it and this was the pen that got uh, benderized right so this was I've told this story a long time ago when I bought this pen so he just basically tunes and works on the ink flow and smooths the nib for an extra fine. Well, this one was an extra fine for any nibs you buy from him. It's his little post-purchasing process, and I hated it, like the results. Like I hated it, and I said it on the podcast, <laughs> and I'll never forget. <laughs> I had some people reaching out to me just laughing, laughing, like, <laughs> look at Brad telling the truth <laughs> on how it happens. <laughs> Because, like, no one would say any, like, bad words about the benderization process. And I just went on there. I was like, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> like, he made it worse. <laughs> so I got a bunch of funny emails about that, uh, lying about that. Or, or thinking people, you know, me telling the truth about it. So anyway, so I got Mike Masayama to fix it. Got the... um um 
extra, extra fine nib on it, and then I learned something else about it. So when you have a soft nib like this one that is that fine of a tip, you don't want to let it touch the bottom of the ink bottle when you're filling a piston, right? So these piston filling pelicans, right? You're in here doing this and you might be like kind of jamming it down on there. So I ended up splitting the tines like this. And um, I went to Mike and I was like, hey, Mike, um, look at this after, you know, I don't know what I did, but I did it. So Mike was kind enough to fix it for me like at the next pen show. So... <laughs> <laughs> the lot lots of uh lots of love uh that this pelican has had so yeah really really good stuff what didn't you like about the writing after it was just it it made the extra fine even like wetter and wider which is not my writing style right he has like a default process he goes through and the result was that it made it worse for the way i write right i would have been much better with like a stock uh, stock extra fine nib with moderate flow. Yeah, he makes some gushers and like it was an extra fine and I, I don't like pens that gush. Like literally the first thing I said when we came on stream today was how, whoops, sorry, was how wet this this uh, Bach nib was and it's like a fine nib and it's just gushing and it's like, you know, it's not my style, right? So his, so Bender's style was not for me um, but I did also didn't know what I was doing at the time, right? Like that was my first kind of like big boy gold nib purchase. And ooh, it's the famous Richard Bender. And I should just let him do it. And it, I hated it. It completely sucked. <laughs> so this one, um, this one Thomas Hall gave to me back when I was doing all of the... Um, the pen education posts. This is the, do they call this a 205 blue? Not, it's not blue stripe because that's a blue stripe. Um, gosh, what's the name of this one? I can't remember. So this is one of the, um, like special edition, like annual release, um, Pelicans that they did before they started doing a lot of the color ones. They had some different, um, different metal pad metal insert patterns on here. Um, and, and this was a real popular one and Thomas had, uh, like two or three of these. So he gave me this one. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. I haven't used this in a while, but like, this is one of those pens I have that I'll never keep Two fifteen, Yeah. And then it like in this finish had a name. So it's like metal strips in, in the uh, barrel here. It's not just like lacquer. It's like actual metal parts, but yeah, I think two fifteen, right? I might actually have a blog post on this. I can't remember if I reviewed this one specifically or not. And of course, coming from Thomas, it has an extra fine, extra fine nib on it. So, um, pelican numberings, it, pelican numbering is hard. It's hard. You can get the sizes right and the shapes right, but then like the the inter sizing and inter shape. Um, names are like impossible like i know it's an m2 something right but uh, after that so this is an interesting box in that i haven't used most of these pens in a while outside of these two which i've used for different reviews and different purposes um i haven't inked these up in a while i haven't inked these up in a while pelican m215 blue barrel with stripes so it was blue stripe Gotcha. Thank you. And then there was another one. They have some different metal patterns on these. Um, at least one other one that I know of. I forget if it was like a like a crosshatch type of thing. I can't remember. Um, but I've seen that before. So anyway. So there's like maybe some stuff to sell in here. Maybe some stuff to ink in here because I haven't inked it in a while. Um, I'm not going to ink any of these today. Um, but my first inclination to ink up but there were three or four of those 215s yeah 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 okay that makes sense group and photo but so if i was to ink anything up i think it would be this 405 inclination ah i didn't even do that on purpose it's just how talented i am 
Um, so yeah, like if I was going to ink one of these pens up, it would be this one, the 405, and then maybe the Optima, and then maybe the Yard of Lead. I'm scared to ink up the Koenig because I don't know. I haven't made a decision on it yet. I mean, there's no reason to be scared to, to ink it up, but I'm just like, well, maybe I want to sell it. So we'll see. All right, the next bit. I've noticed Twisby nibs are fluctuating size. I have a mini white, medium, and iris right there, right different. Um, a little, they do have a little bit of fluctuation. So, um, the next box, I don't know what it's trying to tell me, but there's some gaps in this box. This is the only box with some gaps in it, but it's more because I've moved some other pins out of this box, like the Stilo Art, um, the Stilo Art and the Aboya both used to be in here and I moved them to another box. So I just have Nakayas in here now. So these are all my Nakayas. Um, I need more adjacent pins. I know, that's right. It's like trying to tell me, it's like, hey man, you need some sing, need some Nakayas in there or something. So I clearly have a style. I have a shape that I like, right? So this is the portable, um, which is a large, large size. So this is kind of my, this was my first one. Um, this is the AO Tamanuri with his like the green, greenish kind of undertones. Green, it's a blue green um, lacquering. And this is the one with the fine curves of italic nib and it's probably my best writing pen. Right, this is probably like, I don't, if I'm doing like the top three pens, it's like the Milky Way. Oh, that's another box. We gotta do that another day, some pilots. It's like the Milky Way this one and then like the murex are probably like my top three i don't know it's impossible to say it changes every day but just the writing experience with this pen is great um, probably one of my favorite writers i've used all kinds of different inks in here but mostly um pilot blue black pilot mount fuji blue black i've used um Bungu Box Sapphire, which I like in this pen a lot. I've used Bungu Box 4B. Hey, Toasty Treat. So yeah, I use a lot of different blue inks in here. Um, these days, I've been resorting to the, the Mount Fuji Blue Black because I think these black lacquer Nakayas, especially the red one, I think just blue black is, is kind of like the most perfect setup for these. That's just a personal taste. So that one I ordered from nibs.com. This one I got from, uh, from Rich Liebson. Liebson. Um, how does it compare to Mont Blanc pens to you? Uh, are you talking to me? Or are you talking to, you're talking to Tessa? Um, so this one just has a stock nib. I think it's a fine. can't tell I think it's a fine nib so I don't have any mod oh I don't I mean they don't compare I mean you can't compare I if you're asking me there's no way I could compare these right they just feel different right both equally great but like just the feel of this pen versus like like a 146 or a 149 is just completely different right they're not comparable <clears throat> so again like I've only, I think, used... No, oh, I've used red in this in this pen before. So, like, uh, Robert Oster Red Candy or one of the po Platinum Blue Blacks. So, I don't know. There's just something about this that is just the classic blue-black ink feeling pen to me. And then this was my first Piccolo. This is the Kikyo Blue. This one... The this portable is probably my favorite. This is probably my most used because it has just a stock extra fine nib, and I just throw the blue black ink cartridges in here and just go to town. Like this nib is just, it's the best, right? So, I don't know the 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 Piccolo shape has formed a. 
it's given me like a strong base of the type of pen shape that I like, right? It's not too big. It's very subtle, um, you know, and I like just like the, the, the simpleness of it, the tapers at the end, it's the right size, it's the right width. So question, why would someone go to Nakaya pens? Um, they just feel different than most other pens, right? Um, and they're essentially like pieces of art, right? They take, you know, three to six months to create each of them, you know, so they're, uh, they're crazy expensive, but they just, they feel different than any other pen to me. They're, they're like air light, right? Like you can't, um, you can't really kind of describe a Nakaya's feel. How would you describe the Nanib and Nakaya out of the box? I mean, they just sing, they just sing. They're, they're moderately firm. They're the same as like the platinum nibs. If you've ever used like a platinum nibs. Um, so it's the same general um, nib as the platinum nibs. I don't know if they finish them differently or anything. Um, I, not to my knowledge, but they're really, really great nibs. I don't, I find them to be, it's as lame as this sound stereo sound. They're like the perfect middle ground nib. Like, it's the Goldilocks nib. It's it's not too stiff, right? It's not too flexible. It's not too wide. It's not too thin. No, it's not feedbacky like Sailor. It's not feedbacky at all. It's it's smoother. They feel the same to work on between brands. They tune them while Platinum really doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Platinum has feedback. Sailor has scratchiness, I think. And I mean that in a positive type of way, right? So this is the one... Um, uh, that I use the least. It's because I'm least happy with the nib. Um, I kind of want to get it replaced, but I, I don't know what to do. I, I'm thinking about it, so... I've had it worked on, I've had it tuned, I've had Masayama um, work on it, and it's like an extra, extra fine, and it's good, but it's not as clean and sharp as I want it. Like, I enjoy the stock extra fine more than the extra, extra fine with this one, so I almost want to um, talk to Rick, you swapped one with him? Yeah, but I, I worry about this one because this one's been modified, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm on I'm on a nib swap mission for this one. Plus, I would like a rhodium plated one. Just pull it and swap it. Yeah, I could swap it with this one all the time if I wanted to use it, but I still kind of want to. Uh, I want it to have its own nib. So, this is just a an completely amazing pen, right? So I I just love it, but I use it the least. You also have to line it up. Um, or it'll drive you cuckoo. There you go. You have to line up. He can always say no. Yeah. I should just see if he has a loose one anyway. If anyone at Philly sees any uh, rhodium plated loose Nakaya nibs, I'm your guy. Hit me up. A lot of y'all like the dorsal fin too, huh? The dorsal fin too is too big for me, I think. I wish Nakaya would offer single start threads. Yeah. Well, here's here's the real single start thread issue. What size do you want? I would take anything from medium and below, honestly. Anything that's a stock medium or below in a... Um, See how, like, you don't, this one's not lined up exactly. But you can switch it and get it lined up. So this is the um, Decapod, and this is the Midori Tamanori. So this is the green green. <clears throat> so you can align it. See, that's aligned now, but there is an offset um, in this one. That's just lush. Yeah, you need this pen, Celery Man. This would be a great... Uh, Great transcribing pen. So this is the one. Uh, what's this nib? What's the nib I have in this one? It's a little bit different. It's not a flex. 
I don't let people play with my decapod anymore because they try to cap it and line up the threads by twisting harder. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know if y'all probably can't tell when I when I put this one together, but like there's no push in this at all. Like there's no, there's no like little bump. You just roll it in here and uh, it lines up. But you can offline it too. Elastic nib, yeah. So this is the nib that's shaved. Let's see how I can put it. Yeah, but elastic nib, thank you. So it doesn't have, it's flexible. It's extra fine and it's flexible, but it doesn't have the wings cut out. Sorry, camera's not working. It doesn't have the wings cut out. You almost bought this one? Yeah. But what it does is it shaves the, the thickness down a little bit in the tip. Right under here, right in that area, right past the feed, like this area here, to give it uh give it more of a bounce to it. So like it's it's impossible to see on here. So yeah, it's but for my writing, it's like really, really great because it's not like a super flex flex nib like this but for my like my fine writing it's really really good so see you can just put it off if you get it in the wrong thread like you can't you don't twist this more you just got to take it back out and figure out where the thing is again so this one's actually easier to line up than the than the than this one so that's what I do for a basic flex mod on 14K nibs is to take out some of the underside. That's cool. The green on the threads is so good, yeah. Yeah, not the Spencerian stuff. Yep, yep, yep. So, this box needs friends, right? We need, we'll eventually get lesser and lesser of the other boxes so we can have more friends in the one, the, the one box. I should make like the one box. Um, I could probably do that now. <laughs> And uh, with the, um, put the Milky Way in here. It would be funny to have the Murex in here. Um, but that's that's like a, a perfect nib. What about the yellow nib in the uh, Nagoro's Modified? It's, um, was it a fine or an extra fine? Can't remember what it started as. And then I got it ground to like an extra fine, but I actually don't like, like the tip shape is, I don't know if you can see it. I'm not going to be able to see it. I'll have to get out my, uh, let me see if I can get a picture here. Do you think you could do down to only one box? No, but I could probably get to like half. Like, I could probably get to like three cigar boxes. Who ground it? Uh, Mike Masayama. Let's see if I can get a macro. But for some reason, it's just not crispy. I don't think I have enough length to get this into the, the PO. Like, I like a, a crispier, and this one's just like a, just not. Let's see if I can get it on here. My hand's too unstable. It's almost like it's flattened out. It's almost like it's rounded at the tip, which I don't like. If I if my nib is going to be this fine, I want it to have more bite to it. I can't get a good picture of it. There we go. Let's try this. Let's see if I got it here. All right. Thank you, O4A. I don't know if you can see this. But it's a little more rounded. And I like a sharper. I like a sharper, extra, extra fine. And this is more of a round, so it's almost more of a ball tip type of writing, which I don't prefer in my fountain pens. Makes sense. So it's 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 good. 
it's just not as good as the other ones, right? Like, I'm just being, like, extra particular about this one, like, as I should be. Also, I prefer a uh, rhodium plated nib. Yeah, I could I could get it sharper, but at this point, I want to stop spending money on it and get a rhodium nib because that's what I really want on here. It's a rhodium plated nib. Oh my god! See this one. This one's ten times harder to line up than the decapod. All right. You need this for showing off your nibs. What is that? Oh, I have one of these. Uh, oh, I have one of these on the uh, on the spoke design table. I should bring it in here. You're right, Schmevelin. That would be that would be fun actually to bring. <laughs> Faye with the prom sub and thank you so much, Faye. Appreciate you. How are you doing today? Yeah, because I've already invested like a hundred dollars in that nib, and I'm just like, at this point, it's just a frustration. So I could get it fixed one more time, but it's like, let me get, let me just go pay the money to get what I really want because that's a really, really nice pen, right? That deserves like to be used, right? You can tell it's, it's been well used, but I'm using it less and less now. Browsing the Nakaya website, my apologies. <laughs> A hundred dollars is one seventh. Well, I'd pay another, you know, two hundred and fifty dollars to get the nib that I want in it. I see you working there. Gotcha. Yeah, like I could get, I could get work done on it, but it's more of a just like a. I'm gonna get it if I'm gonna do it. Just let me get let me get rhodium on it and get the pen that I really want. Which that one didn't come with a rhodium plated, um, like by stock. You would have had to have ordered like a add on to it. I browsed the Nakaya website once in a vulnerable moment. I'm still waiting for the consequence. What was the total time? Was it 12 months or was it 18 for yours, Alan? I think it was 12, right? This is why I put platinum nibs in mine because I have those in almost every nib size. I should just grab my UEF. When I want to use that pen, just grab my UEF and put it in there. <laughs> Eight to ten, okay. Yeah, that's that's like that's the price of admission now. That if I saw if I went to order and they said eight to ten, I'd go. Yeah, seems about right. I wouldn't go. Ooh, no. I was like, yeah, it's about right. It is the famous Brad Dowdy. When are you going to Philly, Bruce? <laughs> <clears throat> The, the waiting is killer. The waiting is killer, yeah. But um, going Saturday, nice. Arushi does have to cure. You don't want that oops. Yeah. Well, just order a loose UEF. At, see, this is me. This is just a, this is a me thing, Carol, right? It's a Nakaya, so I want the Nakaya nib on the, the Nakaya stamping on there, right? So... I'll just take, if I'm really desperate to use that pen, I'll just take my one UEF, swap it in and out until I get what I really want in there. Like, I'm I'm one of those particular ones. That's why I don't swap. That's why that Conant's so popular. That Conant has a basic Bach nib in it. But people put, like, pilot nibs and all kinds of crazy stuff on there. Um, O4A, like, I will just pay for, like, if you have some magic you're working, I will just buy, I, I, I'm in the market to buy a nib. <laughs> I was told a year for my Milky Way, then it ended up being a month. Oof, nice. <laughs> Speaking of Nakaya, I might need to do some negotiating. Let me give you one tip, Bruce. Don't force the issue. If you don't see it today, don't worry about it, right? You'll have DC, maybe Baltimore to think about it, right? Like, don't force the issue just because it's there, right? That's one of the biggest things. Got you, Brad. Just trying to make you happy because I like Brad happy. I'm happy. I mean, look at me. My Shone Ultim has Alan's old Conum nib. You know what I need? I need a number eight nib. Because Ian sent me the uh, the number eight size section, but I, I'm, I don't have a nib. So I need to buy that. <clears throat> but the UEF nib, 
would be a nib, I would buy like two more just the nibs to use them for other stuff. That's how good that nib is. The Platinum UEF nib is a Brad nib, at, like through and through. <laughs> through and through. <clears throat> I hear you, Bruce. You know what, Bruce? My recommendation is to start your research process this weekend, right? It doesn't have to be like an immediate gratification thing, right? So you start the, like the Nakaya research project this weekend and take the rest. Like it took me at least 12 months to buy my first Nakaya, probably till I was comfortable spending that kind of money. Yeah. And the pins don't go anywhere. So I'm always happy. Any day man breathing is a good one. Yeah. I hear. All right. So it's kind of whack that except the AO. Yes. If you see, if you're an AO Tamanuri person, uh, <laughs> you should probably just buy it if you see it. <laughs> Took me three years and two trips to Japan to buy my first Nakaya. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have five Nakayas, three of them are secondhand. And I've sold one. So my AO Tamanuri and my Kikyo Blue were both bought new. And then my other three, one was the, the portable with the red was bought from Rich. The Midori Decapod was bought off Reddit. And the, the uh, Nagoro was bought with my, I bought from one person years ago, I bought the Mont Blanc 149, that Sailor M800 demonstrator, and the Nagoro. All of that for like, cheap. <laughs> Less than $1,000 for all three of those pins. I like your blue one, yeah, so that's the, the blue one I have is like a base one. Um, it's only got the Rhodium Premium, and that one cost me like 550 but I think they used to be 450. Yeah, so that's considered a base piccolo with the rhodium upgrade, which is like plus 50 bucks. The Kikyo is a standard color, yes. Well, it was when I bought it. I'm assuming it still is. Yeah, Mafia Geek, definitely take your time. Mm. yep take your time I say that all the time like my Milky Way took me the one you sent me though Bruce was purple and those purple ones are not common I know that Kikyo looks purple sometimes that was definitely purple you might can get a Piccolo for 500 yeah and um I don't know if Rich is there. He'll like swap, swap the nibs around too, depending on what it is. Your Kikyo is purple. In the right lighting, it looks purple, but it's def mine's definitely blue. The Shobu is a standard color, just not common. Yeah, gotcha. All right, so it's gonna be feel, feel weird after showing off Nakaya's to give y'all like a big crystal for a giveaway, but we gotta find we gotta find something to give away because I gotta go today. We got we got stuff to do today. We got shipping. We gotta make the customers happy. I hate that they charge you for the rhodium upgrade when I got my decapod in Japan. They didn't charge me for that. Yeah. I'm just honestly, I'm just glad it's not more than 50, 50 bucks or whatever it was at the time. Conid giveaway? No, no Conid giveaways. I need to sell the Conid. And just keep that money to buy another Nakaya that I want. I, although I don't, I'm not, I don't have a, I don't have a shopping for Nakaya right now, which is good. Like I don't, I don't need another one, but give away a single post-it note. These are the, have I told y'all chat that these are the worst post-it notes ever? Like Kunisawa, I like what you do, except the post-it notes. They don't, they're crappy, sticky, crappy, sticky, crappy. Hey, Jasmine Marie plans. I am doing well. I am doing well. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> Sell a Conan for a Screwbo. That, that's actually probably the move. I really want to try those before I spend the money. Plus, I want to. If I'm getting into XXF nib, 
I want to be around someone that can tune that for me, right? I don't want to order the XXF online and just have it show up at my house. I mean, I can manipulate it, but I I will want it like really like tuned up really, really good. So how they do the how do the Nikaias write anyway? Better than any other pen I own, but I'm a little bit biased. Someone can win those post-its and a Pokemon pen. Oh, that's what I should have done. I gave away all the Pokemon pens though. Let's see. Man, we're like out of stuff in here. All right. We'll go big today. What happened to all the stickers from the NEMA scene? Uh, they're in the shipping department. I keep forgetting to pack them into all y'all's giveaways. It's not the dregs quite, but I, 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 it does need a reload. It needs a hefty reload. Um, because this is far from the dregs, but this is, uh, my guys at Big Eye Design gave me a bunch of pens to give away, and this is, this is the big boy. This is the big T-I-R too. This is the OG big titanium, um, let's see, swapper. So, see, I hold, I hold the good stuff sometimes. Like, I, I can't give away, like, all the amazing stuff all the time just like it's a lot i only i only have so much stuff so sometimes we got to give away you know just the inner gels g thank you for the follow Ugh. so yeah this is the big original one and then it came with like the like a keychain uh uh tool right i don't know what it's for it's for stuff Fix a bent and loose pocket clip. So. so, yeah. But this is the big one. The closet. Well, no, the Closet of Doom needs an audit to bring in the stuff to the Icebox of Happiness, and the audit has not happened, right? So that's where all this stuff came from, right? So you can tell, still brand new. New inbox. Mega expensive stuff that they gave me. Um, how do you audit Infinity? That's true. It's true. So let's give this away. This is a good giveaway. Closet of Doom cleaning stream. It will happen. It will happen. I have to get time. I am I am short on time these days. These weeks go by for so by go by so fast. All right, let's do this. The 823 and the M800 is a good rotation of pins to have. Oh, I need to make room for my keyboard here. Moving everything around. I am an auditor and I will gladly audit the Closet of Doom. Hmm. All right. Let's see. So shout out to Big Idea Designs. Chadwick and Joe. Now that they live closer to me, I need to go see them, but again, COVID. They're only a few hours away from me now. I gotta spell this right. It's gonna bother me. All right. <laughs> giveaway is open exclamation point raffle to enter and you don't have to be a follower subscriber you don't have to live in the u.s i just shipped the um last week's blog winner to italy the s20 pencil the S20 better than the S30 mechanical pencil. I shipped that to Italy. So I will ship anywhere. And then we'll figure out how to fill up that Nakaya drawer. <clears throat> It is really bright in here today. It didn't help that I wore this black shirt with the bright thing. Brad, something I thought about the other night. Has anyone stolen pins at a pin show? Um, it's happened on occasion. You'll hear about it from uh, 
vendors or something um, that, you know, a lot of the, um, the vendors have, um, or a lot of the shows will not have cameras set up, um, which may not happen, like be able to catch someone at the time, but it, um, it's kind of a means to like keep an eye on things. So it, it happens. You hate to see it, <laughs> but it's, I've definitely been at shows where it's been a thing, not like a repeated thing, but where it's happened. <laughs> Entire trays of pins, yeah. Oh, that's right. Sarge did have a big, big thing go missing. Oh, I like I like the look of those Slumberland Studios. I really like the look of that a lot. Yeah, Dan Dan's got stolen from his car though. His personal collection. That was uh, in, from his car. <laughs> All right. Let's pick a winner. Temporarily awry. Temporary awry was lurking earlier, but you entered. So you must be not lurking. Have you actually ever won temporarily awry? Have you ever won temporary ride? I know you're always here. Are you one of the long time uh, zero clubs or have you won like a couple times? I just can't remember. <clears throat> if you send me your um 1.5 wins won a pin case back in the day well that's a it's a full win full win um boy i spelled your name wrong too so there's no p you're right you're temporarily awry so we're just gonna leave that as is because that's pretty much my move um if you send me your address right now I'm going to the shipping department in about 30 minutes and I will get everyone's uh, stuff that they won this week shipped. And hopefully I'll remember to bring up some um, pen cases to give away. Before I do the uh, knock inventory, I'll try to remember to, today to ra uh, grab a batch of knock case. That's one of the things I keep meaning to do is grab some knock stuff to give away because I got a bunch left before we do the final inventory uh, clearance. All right, we got anyone? What's the streaming status today? I need a quartermaster. I know. Look out. I think I got I just got to figure out what I got. Just got to figure out what I got. Sorry, I'm looking here. I always feel funny being in makers and makers and crafting. Oh, here's one. Here's a, ooh, this person has one viewer and they're making cards and doing scrapbooking. Let's go make their day. All right, hang tight. I need a dump truck. <laughs> All right. And they have literally zero followers. I wonder if this is their first stream. Okay, hang tight, y'all. This should be fun, hopefully. And they're doing really good. They're talking, talking to themselves.
All right, let's do this. Oh, where'd y'all go? All right, y'all have fun today. I'll be shipping stuff. All right, enjoy the raid. Okay. 